Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and I had a phenomenal time doing the first 3D print versus wood video. Um, I was really excited when I came up with that idea. I hadn't seen it anywhere else, and a lot of you gave me that feedback too that you're really excited by it. So it's going to be a regular series here. I'm gonna do at least once a month, maybe twice a month. We'll see how it goes. If you really like these things, let me know, especially hit that subscribe button to let me know that this is a, a series that you wanna be notified about, right? Uh, now, congratulations to Brian from Georgia. He's the winner of the Anchor Make M5C giveaway from our last uh, wood versus 3D video. So congratulations to you. I'm sure you'll love your Anchor Make M5C as much as I love mine. Uh, but for today's video, what we're going to do, we are going to do our main head-to-head -head battle, which is my wrench holders, but I'm gonna give you a bonus. A lot of people were asking about tolerances of the 3D printer when, uh, you know, in the comments. And so what better way to do that than to do a 3D setup block uh, print. So I'm gonna have that file for free as well as all the other files, of course, as always. Uh, I'm very interested when I print out these setup blocks, if I pick up that half inch one and take calipers to it, will it be a half inch or will it be a few points above or below? Will it be consistent all the way through or will there be deviations in there? These are things that are very important to know. So we're gonna explore that as a bonus build in this video. But the main head to head is going to be my wrench holders. Uh, I get lots of comments about these all the time. So I figured, hey, this is a great one to do. Uh, I also have a typo in here that only one person has ever said in comments. Uh, so that eagle-eyed person I'm addressing you now, good job. Uh, it says 7 15ths, it should be 7 16ths. So I needed to remake this anyway, so, you know, no time in the present. Uh, but if you're gonna remake something, make it better. And so we're going to add neodymium magnets, these really skinny little guys, into the grooves in here that way. It's going to hold our wrenches in much more securely. Uh, we're also going to make the exact same thing in 3D. Uh, with the 3D printer, the additive printer, as it might be called. And uh, so they're going to be a true head-to-head. -head. It's the exact same design. But I will also do something that everybody was asking for, which is French cleats. So for all my 3D prints going forward, there will be a French cleat on the back and a version that's wall-mounted. So uh, depending your preference, you'll have a 3D print file for that different version. Uh, also, something that was really uh, requested was uh, itemizing the amount of material that I used and the cost of it. So, uh, you know, it might be a little bit relative, but it's going to be interested to interesting to see which is more expensive, the wood or the 3D printed version, and by how much in each direction. So, uh, we're going to explore that in all these videos going forward. But let's get into the head-to-head -to -head today on Bittner Belt. <laughs> For our wood build, in all honesty, when I made these last time, I just threw them in the CNC machine and the CNC did all of the work. The only thing I had to do was put the resin in afterwards. Uh, but not everybody is lucky enough to have a CNC machine on hand, so I will attempt to do most of this by hand uh, instead of using the CNC machine. That way you can follow along. I will still be using my CNC machine to make my letters though, uh, but you could totally use a laser engraver uh, or just handwrite it, labels, final stickers, a whole bunch of stuff like that. You know, use whatever you have at your disposal for this one. For our 3D print, we're gonna be using the AnchorMake M5C. Uh, now, unfortunately, this is just a little bit too tall, too long, too wide. So what I'm going to do is break this into two pieces on the 3D uh, generated model. And then I need a way to put them together. Now in the last video, there was a commenter who made a great comment saying that instead of the keyhole that I used, uh, a dovetail joint is more secure. And he's absolutely right about that. So what I'm gonna do to join these two will be a dovetail. Uh, so when they go together, it'll either slide together really tight or uh, if it's a little loose, you can just add two little dabs of CA glue in there and it will stay uh, fully uh, together. I'm also going to make it where we have three uh, screw mountings on the back or a version where we're going to have a built-in French cleat so you can just hang it on the wall right away. We're over at the CNC machine and I'm going to put all of my files for free up on Easel's platform. I'll have a link down below that way you can just download them uh, and anybody can use them. Uh, the first file is if you want to just use a CNC machine to make this and it will route out all of your pockets. The second tab down at the bottom, so these are all just individual tabs, they're different cuts. 
Uh, the second and the third are my imperial and metric numbers and a little bit of a scoring outline just to show you where to cut it with a miter saw afterwards because it's a lot more effective to just cut it at the miter saw instead of wasting time at the CNC machine with this. For this video though, since I'm trying to do as little of this as possible, I do have two pages that just will put the numbers on if that's what you're looking to do because that's how I'm going to do it. So I have metric and imperial. I'm also making a very last page and what this is going to do, I'm in the process of it right now. Everywhere I have one of these grooves, I'm actually putting a very small little pocket for one of my neodymium magnets. And we don't want to just glue the neodymium magnet on top of the wood in the groove where the wrench goes. Neodymium magnets are actually really fragile and when you hit it with stuff it has a tendency to chip or break. So what I want to do is make a little pocket in here that's recessed so now the, the magnet will be just under the line of the wood and the wrench will never actually come into contact with it. If you don't have a CNC to do this, I will show you when I get to that step how you can just mark it out and use a chisel to, you know, carve a groove for this guy. If you're doing it like me and you put this through a CNC machine and you're going to add resin to it, it's very clean right now after coming out from the CNC machine. I'm going to go ahead and add resin before I do anything else because when it's in a long board format like this, it's easy for me to sand it rather than it being a whole bunch of individual pieces. Uh, it would be a lot more work to clean off the extra resin. Over at our 3D version, we've designed it to look exactly like the uh, wooden version of this. However, uh, it has been broken up into two pieces. So if we rotate this to the side, you'll see that there is a keyhole right here. I'm sorry, not a keyhole, a dovetail. I didn't want to use a keyhole. We did a dovetail. So you can see a dovetail right here, dovetail right here. Uh, so these two just slide together and that will put them back into one large piece. Uh, on the back of the bottom, I have all the different slots for magnets to be inserted. So I've made it pretty thin. You obviously don't see it in the front, but hopefully it's thin enough where the uh, magnetic pull will still go through the plastic to the tool. And then there is one wall mounted uh, hole right here for a screw. On the upper half in the back, we have the same magnet indents, but on this one, I have a French cleat uh, or I also have a version that has two screw holes here as well. So we'll use the exact same one for the bottom, regardless of which top you do, uh, because you know that screw hole doesn't really affect anything. Uh, if you do pair it with this one, it'll be all wall mounted. If you pair it with this one, it will be French cleat mounted. And of course I've done it in both uh, Imperial and metric. My resin has hardened. I'm gonna go ahead and sand these down flush. Uh, if you are sanding resin, wear a full-on respirator. Use your dust collector on your sander as well. Do not breathe this stuff in, okay? Sanding's done. I think it looks pretty good. I've corrected my 7 16th mistake from my old one. The next step, if I'm going with this CNC route, is to take these over to the table saw and cut them. Now, what I'm going to do to decide on how to cut these is I also have my CNC boards where we have our magnet placement. So I'm going to take a pair of calipers and measure the gap in between the magnets and that's what my overall cut needs to be for each one of these so it fits perfectly in between each one of these. We're here in Anchor Make Studio and so before we print this I just wanted to look at this. Um, the wall mounted units are easy prints. You're just going to lay them on their back uh, you will need some global support, but it's going to be very little because it's really only for the keyhole and for these indents in the back. The big thing to look out, though, is the French cleat version, and it has this big unwieldy cleat in the back. And so I've figured out, based on the amount of material that is needed, that this is the correct orientation to use the least amount of filament. So. Uh, you will need to position it at 90 degrees and 81 degrees on the Y. The, uh, the 180 doesn't really matter. You can spin it back to zero. It doesn't affect anything. But this is the most effective way to print it. 
I'm just printing mine with PLA with a 4, a 0.4 nozzle in easy mode, fast, with global supports on. So when I slice it up, the French cleat version takes 3 hours, 29 minutes, and uses 116 grams of filament. If you're going to be making this by hand without a CNC machine, you're going to need your backer board, which we're going to leave a little long right now, at least even a foot, uh, because you might have a different spacing than I do. Your wrenches might be thicker than mine. So we're going to go off of your wrenches for the spacing uh, on these. Over here, I cut 12 strips that are half an inch tall or 13 millimeters. And so these will be my spacers all the way up. I'll end up placing the first one using a pencil to mark a line. I already have it on there. And then from there, if you're going to do magnets, you can go ahead and place your magnets. You could even just be safe so that it doesn't get in the cut zone and do one magnet right in the middle if you wanted to. Go like that. And now you know exactly where you need to use your chisel to cut out the pocket. You need to just wrench, wash, repeat and just keep going up the line with this. The prints are all done. You know, you just have to remove some of the um, support material, which is always fun. It's kind of like people who get a kick out of unwrapping things with cellophane or something. All right, it's all off. Uh, so we have our Imperial and our metric versions. I have this one with the built-in French cleat on here. It is very sturdy on there for the amount of weight that this is going to be holding. Wrenches aren't incredibly heavy in this category, so um, definitely not something that I would worry about. Uh, we have our dovetail that allows us to slide the two pieces together. There we go. Um, I This is about like my third iteration of stuff. The first few, it was just too tight in here, and as you would try to slam it down and get it in there, it would break apart. So I'm more opted for it to be a little bit loose and just throw two dabs of CA glue in there as you're inserting it. It'll stay, uh, and it's not going to be a problem going forward, but uh, I'd much rather that than it be breaking. Let's go ahead and take a look at the magnets. So the magnets right here, I started putting them in on this one. Um, the, the main way that I took to putting these in, I made sure that the slots were very tight, so they shouldn't require glue. Uh, that's different from the wood version because on the wood version, the magnet is directly in contact with the metal wrench. And so when you take the wrench away, it's always wanting to pull out this way. So that one, you definitely need glue. This one, since the magnets are on the back, when the wrench pulls away, there's no force, like it can't go anywhere. So just inserting these by hand will actually work pretty well. So, you know, some of them you have to push a little hard, but it gets in there pretty good. And um, let's test this with a wrench real quick on here. So 7 16th. Right, let's pull one of these. So I have this one in. We got magnets on the back. All right. I wouldn't say that it's ultra strong. See, it came out but it definitely has that hold. So when this is on a wall, it will pull it in, hold it right there. I'm trying to jiggle it around some. Uh, for a wall mounted unit, it's definitely fine. Um, it'll survive some knocks and stuff. For assembling of the backer for our wooden holder, I have been adding in all of the magnets into the grooves that the CNC made. Uh, I've been gluing them in except for one, and there we go. Uh, if, even though they're really tight in here, if you don't glue it in, it's going to come out. So make sure that you take a little bit of CA glue or some epoxy and put it in every single one of these holes. What I usually do now is just take a piece of wood and a mallet, put it down that way. We're in pretty good. If you get any squeeze out, go ahead and wipe it up now. There are two negatives that I see in this print. One is kind of in the uh, crispness and cleanness of the print. There's a difference between the top and the bottom. So here on the top piece, I printed that vertically on this one. And so the lines are going back and forth this way and it actually produced a really smooth, really clean finish. Uh, this other one here, I laid completely flat because that was the most 
effective use of material. Uh, but now it is basically filling it in as it goes back and forth. And so you can see a lot of like line banding in this one. Now that might be resolved if I switch this over to a uh, precision print, but then that will elongate the print time. Uh, but it was just something that I noticed that I wanted to point out. It might be uh, more beneficial to print them like this. You could probably, you could print them at the exact same time if you felt like it in one print go. Uh, one of those prints where you turn it on right before you go to bed and you wake up in the morning and it's all finished. Um, so that's one negative. The other negative is the lack of contrast in here. Um, you know, on the wood one, I filled it with epoxy. So I said, hey, let me do the same thing over here. And obviously I chose blue uh, in my filament. That's what I had available at the time. Um, I could have chosen a different color that might have a more beneficial contrast, like black and white, for example. I tried filling this in with white resin last night. It really did not come out that great. Um, so, you know, one option you could do is put paint in here and then immediately wipe away the excess with a wet towel so that you don't leave it on the exterior of this. But one other thing that I was thinking about, and Anchormake didn't even ask me to talk about this, they have announced their V6 color engine, and it should be coming out very, very soon. I really hope Anchormake sends me one wink, 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 Anchormake. Um, and what that will do is it will transform your Anchormake M5C or M5, uh, their higher uh, end model, and it will allow you to print to up to six different colors when you're using the machine all at once. So what we could have done with this one is told it to, you know, print this in blue, but then wherever these letters were printed in white, so it would actually be solid instead of like a recess cavity in here, and it would have filled it in with white and it would have really popped. Uh, from the current version. So I'm very excited to see that V6 color engine when it comes out. All right, we're in the home stretch, regardless of if you made it in the CNC or you did it on the table saw, everything is the same from here on out. Uh, I have all of my individual dividers cut, and what I've done is spend some time sanding them on the insides, because once we glue this down, you're never gonna be able to get in there. So make sure you do a little bit of sanding right now. Uh, you can glue this with just wood glue and then put a board on top uh, clamp it or add pressure. Uh, I'm probably going to do glue and CA glue just so it sits, uh, you know, fully right away. Now you want to start with the bottom piece, gluing it on, making sure that it's flush, and then work your way up. The top piece on mine is actually going to hang over a little bit, and then I'm going to trim it off uh, after the glue has set when we go to make our little triangle shape. All right, everything is now glued in place, so we need to make our marks for our final cut. And then we're all finished with this. So uh, in the beginning of the video for my wrenches, my smallest wrench, I had a offset of one and a half inches from both sides. Uh, in this particular cut, I'm now gonna change that to one and a quarter. That way I'm respectfully away from the, uh, the magnets. Make a little mark here. Then I'm gonna take my rule, and I'm going to place it at the corner to my mark. And then I'm just going to look down from above just to make sure that I don't see any magnets. I'm going to move it a little bit. Good. I have a little bit of a space here. Uh, that would not be fun to hit the magnets with the saw. So now I'm just going to head and make a scoring line on here. For my particular measurement, I have set the miter saw to a seven degree angle here. And so my shadow sight shows me that I should be right on. I'm gonna be very slow and careful with this just because it's all these individually glued small pieces. Uh, so I'm gonna do multiple passes on here just to try and be as gentle as possible. For our bonus build, I wanted to come up with the most optimal print settings, and so I did a couple tests, and this is fast print with a 0.4 nozzle. You can see all those lines up there. Then I did a precision print with a 0.4 nozzle, much better, but still some lines in there. And then we did a smaller nozzle, a 0.2 under precision, and so this is definitely the best print. However, uh, using calipers, these both are perfect. Uh, there are no defects in it. It is perfectly one quarter inch. And so the optimal way 
is to print it in the least amount of time in the best setting possible, and that's where we are here. So we're gonna print it in precision mode with a 0.4 nozzle. All right, I've printed the entire set and I've checked every single one of them and every single one of them are meeting their intended fraction. So this is 5 sixteenths. I see 5 sixteenths here. Again, we're perfectly square all the way, but you'll see that there are three right here. The 1 sixteenths, 1 eighths, and 3 sixteenths. While it does meet the correct thickness here, so 1 sixteenths, uh, this one, we'll see if I can get it on camera here. Um, there is some peeling only at the end where it kind of flares up right here. Um, and it happened, I think, at both ends. Yeah, you can see it at this end. You can see on this end it kind of curled a little bit. So this was an error during printing where it released adhesion to the bed. Uh, so this specific one, uh, you can see it over here. So while the thickness is correct, this would throw off my numbers. And so I reprinted it individually, and now it came out perfect. Uh, so basically what that was was on these three right here, and it wasn't even that it was the three smallest, it was every other for in the bottom here. There was some sort of uh, bed adhesion issue. My guess is because I was printing this entire set at once, it was cooling down before it got back to layer two. Um, so I just printed these three individually. They printed perfectly fine once I did that. And now I have a complete set. So I would definitely say that the tolerances are here. I would trust this set. And um, obviously I'm not gonna do a wood version of this in the wood versus um, 3D print because if I made wooden set of blocks, they would swell and change over time. So it wouldn't really work out. All right, we're all finished. I think they both came out pretty well. They both are fully serving their functional use. Uh, I think on the 3D printer one, I can't wait for Anchor Makes V6 color engine to come out so that I could print uh, my numbering in white, for example, so there's a very high contrast there. Uh, I think that would make that one look a lot nicer. Um, also, the wood definitely has more holding power, and that's because I was able to place the magnets directly in contact with the wood, uh, as opposed to on the 3D printed version, uh, the magnets are the, on the back, so they have to pass through plastic before they contact with the metal. Um, so there's a slight difference in how much they're grabbing the tool, but it still does grab pretty well. On our bonus print, the setup blocks, I was very happy to see that the tolerances are there. Now, I did have three that had a bed adhesion issue, so when it's printing the very first layer, it peeled up a little bit at the end. Um, that can often be caused by the bed not being hot enough, cold enough, the air around it, too hot, too cold. Um, so it's a very common thing with 3D printers. Uh, I reprinted those individually and they came out perfect. So uh, the printer's capability is definitely there. Obviously, if you're doing something of extreme importance that requires that exact precision, make sure you check it to make sure that everything went okay. Uh, but overall, it does have the capabilities to do nice precision work. Uh, I'm gonna, as always, put my files for free They'll be in the comments or the description down below. Uh, I'm about to do the cut sheet for the wood stuff. And hey, as always, stay safe in the shop. I'll see you in the next video.